All right, so I'm our, I'm back, and uh, we're gonna start on the has changed function. So this dot has changed equals function, and what this is gonna do is return if um, if there's been a change between the previous x and the current x, which is a pretty simple check if uh, if you think about it. It's just if this dot x is not equal to this dot previous x. Or this dot y is not equal to uh, this dot previous y. Return true. It has changed. Else return false. It has not changed. So that's it for the has changed function. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and our last one is going to be difference, uh, which is interesting. Um, so this dot difference. I hope I can spell correctly. Uh, and then we're going to take in a vector two for the difference. So the difference is obviously the difference between the uh, the two of them, uh, which is going to be, if you don't pass in a vector 2, it's going to be the previous x minus the current x and the previous y minus this, uh, this current y. Um, we may flip-flop that because uh, just for logic's sake, uh, I like to go left to right so if we're moving to the right x will always would always be positive or more than previous x so uh, but that's obviously not always the case but I just like to think that way so that when I program things they make sense initially and uh, they still work in the inverse so we're gonna start off by saying if the vector 2 is equal to null then we're gonna use the previous and current x and y so uh, then all we're going to have to do is return a new vector2 and that vector2 is going to be, I said, this.x subtracted by this.previousx and this.y subtracted by this.previousy um, and if this is not null then we're just going to return the difference between the past vector 2 so else return new vector2 uh, this dot x subtracted by vec2 dot x this dot y subtracted by vec2 dot y so that'll get us the difference between the uh, the two of them um, uh, we might even add an invert function in here um, just for the sake of it uh, if we wanted to do it in inverse, we want to do uh, a previous minus the first x or whatever, we want to get the inverse of that. We can say uh, var env is equal to false, or is equal to 1. If invert, then inv is equal to negative 1. And then we can just take this and multiply it by inv. Same thing for the second one multiply that by i and v. Uh, we do the same thing down here. Multiply by i and v. And this one over here. Multiplied by i and v. So if uh, we don't invert it, it's going to be 1, and it's going to be this multiplied by 1, which is itself, which is fine. But if we do invert it, we want to multiply it by negative 1. So if this is positive, it'll become negative. If it's negative, it'll become positive. So uh, we want to allow ourselves the option to invert it, just in case we have a specific need for it. So that is it for the Vector2. I'll post it up on, uh, I guess, both videos. And uh, we're going to go ahead and check out and see if it works right now. Um, and hopefully we don't get any error. So the first thing that we're going to do to do that is, uh, is we're going to open up our index file sorry for my lame editor here and we need to uh, include where did I include the other one here I included it here yeah before the main JS so I'm just gonna copy this line and I'm going to include my vector 2 which is in the same backup folder.js. 
So that's good. Uh, once we start getting more of these, we're going to condense these all into one file and just call it game framework or something like that to make it simpler. Um, all right, so uh, let's see if this works. So let's open up our main.js. And inside of here, let's create a new vector too. Var uh, test vec is equal to new vector two. And we're going to pass in 10 and 15 as the x and y. Let's do an alert, because this is the fastest way we can echo stuff out to the screen. Test vec dot x. Um, then let's do an alert test vec dot y. And then let's do something crazy like dot normalize dot um, x. Uh, and let's look at just those real quick. So if I refresh this, I get 10, that's x, 15, that's y, and then this crazy number, which is the normalized x, which is uh, never goes over 1. So that's cool. Uh, we know our normalize and our x and y, our main vector stuff is working. So let's do an, uh, a test vec dot set, and we're going to pass in 20 and 20. And then let's do, uh, what was our function here? Let's do difference. Let's see what the difference is of uh, our previous minus our, our new. So alert uh, test vec dot difference dot x. So the difference on x should be 10. So let's refresh, 10, fantastic. And our y should be five, refresh, five. So you can see our vector is working pretty well. We got everything set up. Um, we can let's see what the distance is between uh, this, uh, our previous, which is ten, and our current x, which is twenty. Uh, but it's also taking in the y, of course, between y uh, fifteen and twenty. Ah, we broke it that we broke it otherwise I would have continued and been like oh well this doesn't this just uh, doesn't work at all blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and like I would have got comments of it not working so let's check out why distance is not working uh, vec2 I'm using vec2 down here that is why it needs to be this these two vec2s here need to be set to this because it was null so let's close this and refresh it undefined it's fantastic we love undefined right um, so why is it undefined uh, let's see ah we're using dot X it doesn't return a vector to it, it returns a floating uh, point number so there we go the distance is 11.1803 etc etc so that's the diff difference between uh, this vector 2 and this vector 2 as this is the previous and this is the new current so uh, yeah that's our uh, all our functions are seeming to be working just fine uh, we fixed a couple errors and that is the vector 2 so the vector 2 is going to be important in our 2d uh, screen space so thanks for watching and I'm gonna uh, get something to drink and upload this and uh, just leave any comments if you have any questions um, so thanks, have a nice day.